we're going to discuss social work in Sierra Leone. And to discuss this, I am proud to have with us Mr. Abdu Mansari. And uh, Mr. Mansari is an international social worker, and he works for Ruth's Hope Kindergarten in Sierra Leone. So, Mr. Mansari, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Ray, for your time and your effort for reaching me in Sierra Leone. Yeah. And, uh, and so in Sierra Leone, uh, in your community, um, what, are, what are the struggles uh, that you're facing and that you're addressing as a social worker, uh, especially in, in Ruth Hope Kindergarten? Yeah, Sierra Leone is a very small country with uh, over 7 million population. And we've had war for 10 years and uh, we've had mudslides, landslides, flooding, Ebola, and of recent COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And all of this had its own effect on the population, on communities, on livelihoods, on education, on health, on almost everything. Mm -hmm. And so eventually the effects and impacts can be seen across communities. So as a social worker, I have been working with international organizations and we served a great deal during the war and after the war. And so based on our, my experience working with big international organizations, I decided to co-create the Rootstock Hope Kindergarten Union. Uh, this is because uh, we, during our time of working with the big international organizations, they had this top bottom approach of development. They come to Sierra Leone pre-packed. They have their pre-packed uh, programs based on, on, on research being done by international students coming to do their thesis or whatever, or, or consultants being, being, being hired to do some research on the effects of the war on women and children and societies and on communities. So we realized that most of the activities were emergency, 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 and the activities were not sustainable. It was like pouring water in, in a bus drum or, or you know, like wasting resources. Um, the, the, the effect is not seen, the impact is not seen. So it's like going back to square one. So we started, uh, I co-created the Rootstar Group Kindergarten with college social workers to see how best we can work with the communities using the indigenous model, which we think and we've proven to be sustainable, yeah? And so we are closely co-designing and co-building the communities with the people using their local knowledge and knowledge we think that works that is derived from the West, yeah? So we are working with women, we are working with children, uh, but they are all categorized. We have disabled people, we have uh, mentally retarded people, we have young people in drugs, we have uh, war victims, we have also victimizers, highly traumatized, you know? And we have poverty eating into the fabric of society. So there is this, in balance, poverty, deprivation, poor health, uh, social protection systems not working, and people are struggling, people are going by the day, especially people in rural areas. And so you, you've seen this, this, this outflow of young people, young women moving from the rural areas to the urban areas. So there is congestion in towns and cities and the rural areas are, are, are sparsely populated which has its own impact on, 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 on the community. And the effects or the impact also can be seen in cities and towns. We have a lot of slum settlements, conurbation along highways and roads and poor health, insanitary conditions, you know, and a whole lot of issues crop up, you know. These are things that are visibly seen. So as social workers, you know, it's a huge challenge. And the social work profession is not that uh, it's not recognized by the by the government officially on paper, but uh, the value of, the work of social workers in the country, yeah. And basically, we are not satisfied 
it's only your university education that qualifies you to become a social worker. And uh, you have to look for job for yourself. As I'm speaking, as of now, jobs are not available for social workers. You have to walk through uh, the big international organizations, which themselves have limited uh, space for social workers. And they have their own strategic plan you have to work with, you have to work on, uh, which basically most of the things they do work against the social work code of ethics, you know, but <laughs> They are not social workers. So you trying to turn that around, then becomes becomes a crisis, you know? So we have this imbalance of uh, ethical social work practice and social work practice as required by the big organizations uh, uh, creating employment or employing you. So we decided to break away from working for big international organizations to see how best we, we can start social work lay initiatives, you know, introducing models, uh, who designed, who created, and co built with the community people, and which we think is feasible. Yeah. And so over the years, we have realized that most of the communities don't have schools, don't have health clinics, don't have safe drinking water, and uh, the people are poor. And they cannot expand their farms, they cannot expand their vegetable gardens, they cannot go for conventional health care treatment because they are poorly resourced. And so we 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 did community plans with the communities at a radius of three kilometers per community. So we do assessments of the communities uh, to know what is available, what resources are there, what resources that are not there what resources we can bring from, from out of the community and how best we can harness those resources to bring smiles on the faces of the people living in the community, like building schools, like building health centers, supporting farm families to grow their own food and doing counseling with uh, traumatized young people, uh, dealing with rape, child rape, girl child rape, dealing with, uh, orphans, dealing with uh, uh, bereavement, dealing with widows, you know, and dealing with uh, trauma, you know. And so we grapple with all of this and, and also dealing with mental health, which is chaotic currently in Sierra Leone. Almost every young person is addicted to, to cocaine, to hashish, and uh, to, to new forms of drugs coming from China. And, and they call it kush. And they smoke it and they go here while they misbehave and they cause trouble, they damage their health. And so it's all encompassing. And basically, we are not professionals in the field. We have no speciality. We are basically doing general social work practice, like community development. So the online courses we do, like solution focus therapy and other courses we, we enroll online to do. You know, that helps us a great deal, that builds our capacity, you know, to put into practice those ideas we think are workable, are feasible in our communities. But it does not stop at that. We are also putting on paper the models that are working in our communities so that the world can read, so that the world can understand our condition and, and our situations that it's not in all cases that Western models work in some parts of Africa. So I did a presentation last year and I was stating that Western models don't work here. Yeah. And I had that video, it, uh, it went viral uh, with the IFSW, that is just a federation of social workers. And we published that article and we also share some stories on in books that we've written already that is available on the IFSW website. So we are using the Roots Hope Kindergarten as a model initiative to see how best we can co-design and co-create and co-build the communities with the community using the community resources, you know, and the knowledge and everything that they have. As I'm speaking as of now, we are working on um, 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 the, 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 the Ubuntu Ecological Resource Center, 
uh, is a resource center comprising uh, a multi-purpose hall where uh, women, young people, the old the children can come for recreation, for counseling, for rehabilitation. Then we also have uh, uh, the boarding school facility to bring orphans to school and to bring other people to school that don't have access to school. And those whose parents can't afford it, they can come there, and they can be schooled, they can stay in boarding and they can receive training of diverse forms, rehabilitation of diverse forms. Then we also have uh, the solar project that will supply electricity to the whole complex. They also have a project to apply water to the whole facility. And we'll be also having a clinic there, like a health center and a backpackers lodge, then a vegetable garden, and a tree planting area, and then a recreation ground. We, we, we are working towards making it an international center where CEOs like you, your teammates can come and they can have access to communities where we assemble them. And then we can work with uh, drug, drug addicts. We can work with rape victims. We can work with war victims. We can work with people that are highly traumatized to transform them, to get them back on their heels to able to uh, live their lives. And we are also use, we also want to use the center uh, to do pilot projects like the telehealth. Communications in Sierra Leone, it's, it's very expensive and it's not everybody that can afford a telephone. And if they can afford one, it's for WhatsApp, maybe reaching out to other family members, you know, on very important issues, most like using uh, uh, communications to do online counseling or talk to groups by, via Zoom is quite complicated. It's quite complicated out here. So telehealth, uh, it's a bit complicated. So that is why I said it's, it could be a new normal for rural communities you know i'm using uh, a wifey is a wifey i'm using to get connected and if you move out of the city a little bit then you you lose connections it's you only have proper network when you are in the city and some uh urban areas where they have the poles for transmission but no sooner you move away from that then network is not there so you have to use your telephone to buy data, which is quite expensive to keep you online, you know, and most times there is no electricity in rural areas. So you have to recharge your computer, you have to recharge your phones. So that is why uh, I, I spoke with Cliff to say it is not feasible at some point in, in rural communities in Sierra Leone, yeah? So, that was the issue I was really trying to discuss with uh, uh, with Cliff. So but I told Cliff, what we do is face to face. Yeah, we work with children in groups, you know, with face masks on, and we have all the COVID-19 prevention uh, 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 ethics guidelines. We observe those, and we also observe, we also use our local methods. Yeah, so we sit in circles, distances apart and he look at the western models that work and also look at the indigenous models that work so we get the best out of the rest then we'll move our communities forward yeah so these are some of the issues we are we we are working on the community provided the land for the ubuntu ecological resource center they provided the land and they also provided the the the, the manual labor to clear the land and to dig trenches and holes to produce the clay bricks, yeah. And we've, we've built connections with uh, colleagues whom we met online, like we met you, like we met Cliff and meeting you now to see how best they can, they can support our initiative in Sierra Leone. So the Latin America group, uh, Latin America, that the Chile, Argentina, and Colombia, we have like universities, uh, what we are doing and so we have a whatsapp group we meet uh once every week to discuss ideas to look for sponsors 
to look for possible collaborations and partnerships to see how best they can help us build our center. So the Latin America group, uh, the INACAP University and other institutions, I cannot remember their names now, uh, they are working towards raising funds to bring water to the center. The other group is raising funds to bring solar energy to the center. Yeah. And the other group is working towards bringing sanitation, toilets and other stuff. So we are looking for partnerships to build the backpackers lodge, to build the health center, to build the clinic, to build recreation center. And we have uh, over 10 acres being offered also for tree planting to green the environment, you know, trees for life, trees for the future through today. And we also have a huge chunk of marshland being offered by the community to grow our own food, where backpackers can also take part in growing their own food whilst they are there and they can eat from the harvest. Yeah. So these are the issues. And we want to make it a center where young people can come. We can bring them, we can encamp them there, and we can we can work on the challenges they are going through in life. Yeah. We can bring in doctors from abroad, they have accommodation, they have the clinic, and they can render charitable services on health issues. We can bring in counselors, mental health professionals to come and, and train social workers and train community leaders to be champions of their communities to help transform um, the lives of young people and the people in the communities. And we can also bring in professional farmers to bring in new skills, new ideas that we can add to our local knowledge to improve on farm yields you know to expand our farming to improve on 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 on, on the holistic life needs but we are careful we want to do it sustainably yeah we want to do it sustainably yeah we take into consideration a whole lot of things yeah because uh we don't want to be dependent. We, we want the communities to be independent when once we are stepping out, they can be able to handle, like repairing the solar system when it's breaking down. They can repair the pumps when they are breaking down. They can repair the buildings and they can manage and they can train, you know? So we will get a pilot where people can come from all over the world. They have a space to live. Uh, they have communities to work with and they, they can be a research center and as I speak, uh, we also have a partnership with Han University in the Netherlands. Uh, they want to send uh, some social workers to Sierra Leone uh, to, because they are doing international social work. So I told them in one of my presentations that it will only be international social work when you choose one of the poorest countries in Africa. Because most, most experts working for World Vision, Action Aid, Caritas, this IRC, big global world vision, big global NGOs, they come as experts, but they know nothing about Sierra Leone. They know little about Africa. They know little about life in the rural areas. They only read in books, but they won't put hands on the ground to, to get a clear picture of what life is. What you read in books may not be the reality on the ground. So I will, we were able to convince them. So they are sending some social workers from Han University to come to Sierra Leone to spend five to 10 months here to have a clear picture of what social work practices in, 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 in one of the fifth poorest countries in the world. So they have, that will expand their knowledge. It will reorientate them about what the world looks like, what life is, and they'll get a clear picture of what social work is. Maybe social work in Netherlands is not social work in Sierra Leone. Social work in Sierra Leone, in a, in, in a country, in a situation where the social protection system is zero, where you cannot refer. No referral systems, yeah? Like you have 20 youths that are highly drugged and you, you, you're working with them to rehabilitate their lives. You know, you don't have nowhere to refer them, no support system from any other organization. So you have to work solitarily as a social worker because you're passionate about the profession and you have love, you flow with compassion and you've seen the need 
So all we do is to talk to collection social workers across the world to support us with like minds. Um, they can support us uh, with knowledge, with resources, with finances, with some techniques. And then we, we move on our communities. That is how we've been working. As I'm speaking, we built over 20 schools, you know, for over the period. Yes, you know, and uh, building health centers, we are supporting families. And as I speak, we have uh, over 50 community youths, boys and girls that have gone through high school. These are the teens we want to provide, make provision for, to receive maybe international education abroad. So with this African perspective of poor, 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 and they've learned from us over the period how we work with them, how we help them, how we both co-design and co-build, you know. And so with them having access to Western education, maybe studying social work, studying uh, building and constru construction, you know, studying water management, studying environmental studies, you know. So coming back home, I think they will have to take from us then they will expand the initiative. They will expand the initiative and the network will be huge. So the center becomes an international one and they will reach out more to more communities and it will be a model and lives will change, communities will change, then it will be a plus plus, then we'll be satisfied. Then everybody will be flowing with love because we are working towards what we want to achieve. So this is basically in a nutshell, this is what you've been doing and what we propose to be doing in the coming years, you know. Yeah, wow, you've been doing an incredible amount. Um, I'm almost uh, speechless <laughs> with the, yeah, with uh, all that you're doing. Um, one thing I'm kind of curious about is what got you to the point where you said for yourself, hey, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to. I'm going to take my life and, and put my life to work in making change in my, in, in these communities. What, what brought you to this point? Yeah. Personally. He who feels it knows it. Yeah. I personally went to a Catholic primary school mm -hmm. and uh, we had this young Christian students organization mm -hmm. in a primary school. It was formed by a Catholic priest. And so I was secretary general to the Young Christian Students Association of our primary school, yeah? And so our first approach, uh, our first activity was to elect the president, the secretary general, and the secretary general, and the public relations officer. I was doubling at a very young age, yeah? And so we started that taking out handouts to old people, the paupers, in Africa, when you are old, uh, you, don't, you don't have old age homes where you can be taken to be cared for. You have to live with your families. And most families go to the farm in the morning and they come home late in the evening. And so the old people are left in the homes to starve. So we realized that with this with the Catholic priest. So we did, uh, we did home visits during the day when almost everybody is on the farm. So we discovered 50 people spending the day without food, without care, without attention. So we did the registration of them. And in the evenings, we came back when the families are back. And so we, we built a relationship with these families. And so that said, we prepared sacks. We prepared sacks. So we put in their burger or whip with milk and soap and some used clothing, blankets for old people. So we started bringing this stuff for them and uh, we realized that nobody's there to prepare the food. So we prepare food and bring it for them. Then we launder, we wash their dirty linens, we clean their rooms. Everybody was assigned to three old people per day. So after school, you have to visit them, clean their rooms, change their beddings, and take the, 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 the dirty one, the tidy ones, you clean them, you clean them up, you iron them, and you report the next day to the, the, the Catholic priest. So on Sundays, we pick them up, we bring them to church, we pray with them, yeah? So that grew with me. 
So I had that passion since primary school to that moved on to high school. So, I, so at high school, I I was also part of social club with young people. So we had a football club, and we have also a club for girls. Yeah, and but most times, my colleagues we are passionate about football, like changing other schools and other villages. But I had my my focus that we have to move it further looking for the less fortunate ones in these communities and see how best we can convince the Catholic priest to offer them scholarship to come to school. Okay, so we have, yeah, so we ask the priest to provide scholarships and to build schools in these communities. And so schools were built in these communities and the scholarships were offered and even churches were built in these communities. And, and, and so from that, can, when I went through my high school examination, then I entered university. But my parents were poor and they cannot afford uh, a direct uh, education for me. So I had to go from a certificate to diploma. You know, I have to just hop. And uh, there was not a course being offered in social work in Sierra Leone by then. So I had to tailor my training to something related to what I started doing in primary school, then in high school. So I started doing a course in social development, then in adult education, then I did project planning and management, then in development economics, then I did parenting workshops when I went to the UK. Somebody just invited me for one year to the UK to serve as a volunteer so, I, so that I can have an idea about what the West looks like. Then I was able to learn for a whole year. So I have this Western perspective about life and the poorest part I come from, so it's dual. So that builds, that keeps bubbling me, yeah? And so he who feels it knows it. So coming back home, I was able to, I built my connections in the UK and Germany. So I was able to build more schools, more health centers, yeah? And so if we don't do it, you know, I, I, think, I, I, I think I have a responsibility, yeah? And, because all the areas that we build schools since creation, nobody has built schools there. And nobody is even going there to ask them to build schools. And we still have tens of communities that need schools. They are all looking up to us to give them schools. Yeah, because it's in the remote areas. And governments, they build schools along highways, easily accessible areas, yeah? And uh, they don't want to incur more costs. They want this politics. Yeah, we'll build this school. We'll build that school. They can be seen along the highways. But the bulk of the people that need help most live in the hinterland. So we are going in the hinterland where vehicles don't go. At times, we leave the motorbikes. We walk on foot. And you see loads of children all over the place with no access to school, no access to safe drinking water, no access to proper health care. Yeah? So with that, and you see that, and you see the potential in these young people, and you imagine your life if you were one of those. And I was one of those categories. So that yeah, coming so, to mind, I said, no, we have to just move out there and do something. Yeah. So, so that is what is moving me yeah. to not stop, keep moving, making connections online, doing all the networks I can be able to do. But yeah. one thing, one thing that is challenging for us, despite all the big jobs we are doing, when you apply for funding to big NGOs operating in Sierra Leone, they want to ask for criteria. You should have a big office, paid up staff, computers, and vehicles, blah, 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 tra la la. You have to submit financial reports, auditor reports. But what they are doing, as big international organizations, it's not a match to what you are doing as a local initiative. So this is the challenge. So most times we, we lose sight of all those big, big NGOs, big criteria to apply, to apply for funding, grants and stuff. So we're going for, we build personal contact, personal relationships. We even encourage our friends, well-wishers, philanthropists to come to Sierra Leone to visit and to see what we are doing. We go to the communities, you see it firsthand, and you say, okay, 
I'll support this project. I'll support this. I'll support that. I'll support that. So most yeah. times we travel, we are invited to do presentations. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, people support us to build school health centers and uh, support mm -hmm. farmers, support disabled people, you know, so yeah. this the situation. So if you go on our Facebook page, Rustax of Kindergarten, Sagalun, we have a Facebook page. You can see most of our posts of what we do. Mm -hmm. Very recently, mm -hmm. because of our connections with Latin America, a, a, a university like they, they they sponsored the setting up of a website for Ruth Starks Hope Kindergarten Sierra Leone. And so we are doing all this network to see how best we can operate as an international organization but you, with the community. You know, we want to make it look like Ubuntu. I am because we are, you, you know. So we can put all these ideas together sustainably to grow uh, uh, our communities. So we can learn, we can give and take. You right, know. right. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds it sounds like it was the the motivation was instilled in you when you were a young boy because yes. you, because you were given the opportunity to serve other people, older yes. people in their homes. Yeah. So yes. that 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 um that concept of service was instilled in you when you were young. Yes. And you were given opportunities and you kept moving forward. Uh, yeah. So now you're trying, you're trying to instill that same idea of service in other young, young people. Yes. yes. You, you went abroad, you studied abroad and you came back. And I know a lot of, I, I hear a lot of people that study abroad a lot of times don't come back. Yeah. You, you came back yeah. and uh, your life is a life of service. And yeah. it's, it sounds like you're, you're not getting funding from the federal government but you are getting resources from the local communities and then international groups Is yes that right? yes and, and so what you need is you need more partnerships to continue doing what you're doing building schools yeah, yeah. you know all, all these resources that the communities need yes uh, yeah and what you found is that the international groups that came in, it was focused on emergency services and it was coming from a, the model, the model of providing services wasn't completely a fit. It wasn't yeah. sustain. It wasn't sustainable. Yeah. And through the time that you've been doing this, you, you've identified models that are working for you. Yeah. And you have a presentation on that, that people can watch yeah. to, to find out what, what actually works. Yeah, and then also in the description of, of this video and article, uh, we'll have the link to your website, Ru uh, Ruth's Hope Kindergarten, the website where they can also yeah. link to the Facebook page and yeah. see what it is that you're doing. Yeah. So if if an organization, whether really small, an individual, or a large group, if they want to get involved and help out they can contact you through your website. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you have, uh, you, you, so in terms of social work, it's building communities. It's a lot of helping provide um, the fundamental things that a person needs to thrive, school, yeah. food, shelter, safety, yeah. education, mental health services. Yeah. yeah. Now you mentioned uh, the, the the telehealth uh, not working because you don't have the technology. Yeah. Um, what about audio only, just phone calls? Does is does that work for telehealth in your communities or no? Well, it's it may work. It may work on conditions. Yeah, we have very cheap phones. Very cheap phones. Mm -hmm. and uh, very cheap phones that can go up about maybe $20 or $25, 20 or $25, yeah? And uh, there, is this, there are the mobile solar, solar chargers, very small ones, where you can charge your, your mobile phones on that. And uh, 
then you can uh, leave this uh, with, uh, you, you identify team leads in each of the communities. You identify team leads. So when once there is a condition that needs uh, a tele uh, 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 issue, that needs to use the telephone to talk to somebody that needs help, then you can talk through the, the team lead then the team lead will bring the telephone to the person and the team lead will facilitate the communication between the social worker and the client, yeah? Then after that process, then the team lead will keep the telephone for another okay. session with another person. And that has to be maybe in a radius of a kilometer per telephone, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yes. and, the and there will be times also. So there has to be a strategy, you know. So yes. it's a new normal for us. Yeah. So right. it will be like a pilot project to see if it's feasible. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 So these are the issues. Yes. Yeah. I. I could. I. Yeah. That. That is, and it's a big issue. It's quite a yeah. challenge. Yeah. Uh, so a lot. A lot of. A lot of education and work. Um, so many things are done online on the internet. So it sounds like a, a, a major thing that you all need. I mean, you, you need a lot of things, but the uh, yeah, the technology sounds like a, a, a big piece that's that's missing. Yeah, technology is a big piece that is missing out there. Technologies mm -hmm. out there are used by big like the UN system, the European Union, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, oh yeah, we run webinars for those of us with uh, Wi-Fi and laptops, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. Android phones, you know. Mm -hmm. But for communities, what we do is face-to-face. -face. All our activities yeah. is face-to-face. -face. It's face-to-face. -face. Right. All yeah. our activities is face-to-face. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and how do you, like, in terms of... Um, mental health, uh, you know, yeah. people, people overcoming the challenges of abuse, war, uh, you know, all the trauma that, that people have experienced. I would imagine some people would get support by hearing, like watching videos of other people have, that have um, worked to overcome those challenges. Do, do people get support online at all? Or is, or, or is basically almost all of their support interactions face-to-face -face with people. Yeah. What we do is face-to-face -face interactions. We yeah. assemble them in, mm -hmm. in by communities. Maybe yeah, we run okay. two, two three-day workshops with them. We do uh, a lot of activities with them. Yeah? Yeah. Because yeah. what we learn online that we think is feasible is what we practice, then we, we try to impart that. Mm. We try to use that in workshops. Mm -hmm. The first day, the second day, the third day. At times, the workshop stands for spans for a week, yeah. Mm -hmm. And after a week, then we move back to the communities to see what have they benefited from the workshops. We do an evaluation, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, we we invite them. We do our best to transform them also to become facilitators to other groups based on what they've learned from us. Oh, so okay. we, we involve them in, in other community activities to facilitate. We put in the sideline and they facilitate. So we just pop in to make some clarifications. Yeah. Right. That's, so, that's, a, that's, the, that's the sustainability rather than just going and providing some workshop and that's it. Yeah. You're yes. providing, you're providing with, you're providing the workshop with the expectation that they're going to pass it on to others that they're going to. Yeah. Yeah. But the yeah. big challenge we have is that we don't have like, referral centers where we can refer them to be engaged in sustainable livelihoods. Yeah. So what what uh -huh. what 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 we are doing is is bringing them into groups uh, to do vegetable farming. Those that want to do carpentry, we we arrange for a community workshop where they can do their carpentry. Those that want to do motor mechanics, we we mm -hmm. go to the local garages. They will get them tools and, and everything that they need. So every day mm -hmm. we go through, we visit 
each of these skills training centers to see how they are doing, what they are doing. If there's anything coming up that is uh, not good, then we can note that, then we can call up the mm. clients to come to the office, then we can work over that. So it's yeah. on a daily basis, on a routine. And yeah. we, 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 make, we do motivational speeches and uh, yeah, that is how it's working. We support them. Some may not, need, may, may, may not have food at home. Some may mm. not have proper clothing. Some may not have transport to, to pay to come to the center. So we support them you know, uh, to make sure they are there. Yeah, yeah. You know? And when, when, you, when you go to a community to do a workshop, how many staff members, like how many helpers are coming to, to do that? Well, every community has a structure. Our first step is to mobilize the community. We do community mobilization, identifying uh, uh, the, the head teacher in the community school, the nurse in the community health center, uh -huh. and the, the, the youth leaders in the, community, in the communities. So we identify okay. them. So yes. then we form a community oh, okay. development committee. We form the community development committee. So we work with this community development committee in right, every meeting. Right. They arrange the meetings, they arrange the workshops, they prepare the hall, they prepare the seating, they prepare the food for the for the for the workshop, and yeah. they they give out the invitations, you know. So these are the things. So every community has its own structure, has its own setup, already pre pre-done. Those right. are the preliminary steps we take to build community structures involving mm -hmm. the key players in the communities, the nurse, mm -hmm. the teacher, the chief, the, 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 the youth leader, you, you know? So these are the key players and the local chiefs because the communities listen to them. Uh -huh. We go to the mosque, they go to the church. So we have a relationship with the pastor, with the imam. So during right. church services, they make announcements that this Roots Hope Kindergarten having a workshop tomorrow. Please inform your kids to be there. The mosque does the same. The school does the same. The health center also talk to people coming to the hospital. The chiefs also do the same. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're really, yeah. you're really, you're coming into a community and you are establishing a committee that's representative, yeah. representative of leaders of. Of yes. the whole community, yes, and and bringing them together with a focus, yes, and, and follow through, yeah. yes, yeah, wow. So, well, I I really appreciate this. This has been um, very informative. It's moving, and if you're listening to this, watching this video, uh, please visit Ruth's Hope Kindergarten's website and their Facebook page. Uh, and please uh, consider how it is that you can uh, support, support their mission, um, which is, uh, you know, obviously very, very extremely uh, important. And uh, yeah, Mr. Mansari, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. For your time. And uh, yeah, th this is, this has been really helpful and um, really appreciate all the things that you're doing. And, and I know it doesn't, mean much for me right you know from uh from from another country but uh for for what it's worth my my heart really really is extremely thankful out of care for people that that need help so thank you for all that you're doing i really appreciate it yeah yeah thank you Ray. thank you very much for your time yeah. and mm -hmm. thank you for the passion to help other people around the world mm -hmm. thank you very Welcome. much yeah